Words spliced, growing across the gaps like vines as her eyes unfocused, until her handwriting was just one writhing blur. Pip was looking at the page, but she wasn't really there. It was like that now, giant holes in her attention that she slipped right into. There was a time, not too long ago, she would have found a practice essay about Cold War escalation and thralling. She would have cared, really cared. That was who she was before. But something must have changed. Hopefully it was just a matter of time until those holes filled back in and things went back to normal. Her phone burst against the desk, Kara's name lighting up. Good evening, Miss Sweet F.A., Kara said when Pip picked up. Are you ready to next? Flix and chill in the upside down? Yep, CW, two sex. Pip said, taking her laptop and phone to bed with her, sliding under the juvet. How was the trial today? Kara asked. Naomi almost went this morning to support Nat, but she couldn't face seeing Max. I just uploaded the next update, Pip sighed. Makes me so angry that Ravi and I had to tiptoe around it when we record saying allegedly and avoiding anything that steps over the presumption of innocence when presumption of innocence when we know he did it he did all of it yeah it's gross but it's okay it will be over in a week kara rustled in her covers the phone line crackling hey guess what i found today what you're a meme an actual meme that strangers are posting on reddit it's that photo of you with D.I. Hawkins in front of all the press microphones. The one where it looks like you're rolling your eyes at him while he's talking. I was rolling my eyes at him. And people have captured the funniest things. It's like you're the new jealous girlfriend meme. This one has a caption of me by you. And beside Hawkins, it says, Men on the internet explaining my own joke back to me. She snorted. That's when you know you've made it, becoming a meme. Have you heard from any more advertisers? Yeah, Pip said. A few companies have emailed about sponsorship. But I still don't know if it's the right thing profiting off what happened. I don't know. It's too much to think about, especially this week. I know, what a week. Tara coughed. So tomorrow, you you know, the memorial, would it be weird for Ravi and his parents if Naomi and I were there? Pip sat up. No. You know, Ravi doesn't think like that. You've spoken to each other about it. I know, I know, but I just thought with tomorrow being about remembering Sal and Andy, now we know the truth. Maybe it would be weird for us to... Ravi's the last person who would ever want you to feel guilty for what your dad did to Sal. His parents too, Pip posed. They lived through that. They know better than anyone. I know, it's just... Kara, it's okay. Ravi would want you there. I'm pretty sure he'd say Sal would have wanted Naomi there. She was his best friend. Okay, if you're sure. I'm always sure. You know, you should talk... You should think about taking up gambling, Kara said. Surely my and Naomi's fucked upness helps to normalize you. Not enough, apparently, said Pip. If you could try a bit harder, that would be great. That was Kara's way of getting through the last six months, her new normal. Hiding behind the quips and one-liners that made others squirm and fall silent. Most people don't know how to react when someone jokes about their father who murdered a person and kidnapped another. But Pip knew exactly how to react. She crouched and hid behind the one-liners so that Kara always had someone right there next to her. That was how she helped. No taken. Although not sure my grandma can cope with any more. You know, Naomi's had this new idea. Apparently she wants to burn all of Dad's stuff. Grandparents obviously said no and got straight on the phone to our therapist. Burn it? I know, right? Kara said. She'd accidentally summon a demon or something. I probably shouldn't tell him. He still thinks Naomi will turn up one day. Kara visited her dad in Wood Hill Prison once a fortnight. She said it didn't mean she'd forgiven him, but after all, he was still her dad. Naomi had not seen him once and said she never would. So what time does the memorial... Uh, hold on, Grandpa's talking to me. Yes? Kara called. 
her voice directed away from the phone. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I am. Kara's grandparents, her mom's parents, had moved into the house with them last November. So Kara had some doctor ordered stability until they finished school. But April was almost over and exams and the end of school were fast approaching, too fast. And when summer arrived, they would put the ward's house on the market and move the girls back to their home, home in Great Abington. At least they'd be closed when Pip started university in Cambridge, but little Kilton was a little Kilton without Kara, and Pip quietly wished the summer would never come. Okay, good night, Grandpa. What was that? Oh, you know, it's gone ten thirty, so it's super late and past lights out time, and I should have been in bed hours ago and not chatting to my girlfriends. Plural. At this rate, I'll probably never have a girlfriend. Let alone multiple. But no one has said lights out since like the 1700s, she hoped. Well, the light bulb was invented in 1879, so... Ugh, please stop. Have you got it lined up? Almost, Pip said, dragging her finger across the mouse pad. We're on episode 4, yes? This, this had started in December, when Pip first realized Kara wasn't really sleeping. Not surprising, really. Lying in bed at night is almost when the worst thoughts come, and Kara's were worse than most. If only Pip could stop her listening to them, distract her into sleep. As kids, Kara was always the first one to go at sleepovers, her light snores disrupting the end of the cheesy horror film. So Pip tried to recreate his childhood sleepovers, calling Kara while they binge-watched Netflix together. It worked. As long as Pip was there, awake and listening, Kara eventually fell asleep, her soft breaths whistling through the phone. Now, they did it every night. They started with shows Pip could legitimately argue had educational value. But they'd been through so many that the standard had slipped somewhat. Ew, at least Stranger Things had some historical quality. Okay, ready? Kara said. Ready. It had taken them several attempts to get the shows to run in exact synchronization. Kara's laptop had a slight delay, so she pressed play on one and Pip went on go. Three, Pip said. Two, one, go.